Hey everyone, Cincinnati Auction King. Today I want to give you some tips on listing stuff on eBay. A lot of my friends and co-workers have been asking me because they know I list a lot of stuff on eBay. And hey, Cincinnati Auction King, how do we get started? What do we do and what do we list? And I'm here to give you some tips on doing that. My first big tip for you guys is to start listing things that you have around the house. Things that you may possibly put in a garage sale. That's how I got started. So, of course, I had to check with my wife. Hey, are we using this anymore? What do you want to do with this? Oh, I'm saving this for a garage sale. Well, those are the things I started with. So, things that would probably sell in a garage sale for five, six, seven dollars on eBay, you can probably get ten or fifteen dollars for it. So, start listing stuff around the house that you're not using anymore. That would be my number one tip. I want to go back for a minute. Of course, my number one tip would be, first of all, you have to open up an eBay account and a PayPal account. Those are done very easily, so make sure you do that first before you get started on trying to sell anything online. As far as eBay, open up an eBay account, and then you tie a PayPal account to that eBay account. That's where your money would come from, so get started that way. Okay, guys, the following tips are not necessary in any real order, but these are important things that you need to know about when selling stuff on eBay. Uh, the fees are something that people get discouraged on because they end up not making as big as profit that they thought they were going to make because of what the eBay and PayPal fees are. So um, I usually gauge everything basically 15% of my sale price. So again, you're selling a $100 item on eBay, you can count on eBay and PayPal taking 15% of that total sales. I want to add a side note to the 15% fees. So on eBay, if you are selling something for $100 and you're charging your customer $10 shipping, that's $110. So eBay takes the hundred and ten dollars and classify that as your sale price so keep that in mind uh, when you're looking at your profit margin again it's not fifteen percent off the hundred dollar sale price of your item it's fifteen percent off of your sale price and your shipping combined so again in the, my first example hundred dollars price tag on your merchandise $10 shipping that you're charging your customer, you're going to get charged the total amount, the $110. Hopefully everybody understands that. All right, another tip is learn your shipping costs. Um, I see a lot of people on eBay making very, very big mistakes. Let me give you an example. They put something up for auction. It only sells for 4 or $5. I think they was counting on making more money than that, and they offer free shipping. So you sell an item for $4, you offer free shipping, and end up, end up costing you $7 to ship the item, well, automatically you lost money. And that's where people get discouraged at. No, learn your shipping fees. Learn your first class mail prices, learn your bulk mail prices, learn FedEx, learn all of that. Now, on eBay, you can look at that and see what the cost is going to be. But you need to know ahead of time before you list that item on what you're going to charge your customers for shipping. It's great to offer free shipping, but you don't want to lose money because you did not know what the weight of your item was, how much it was going to cost to ship it to California, compare it to ship it to the East Coast, compare it to ship it down south. So you need to know these things, and it's very important because you can lose a lot of your profit or a lot of your money off your sale just because you miscalculated your shipping. Now as far as uh, charging my customers shipping fees or compared to free shipping, my rule of thumb is that you know if I'm selling five, six, seven dollar items I cannot afford to offer free shipping so I charge my customers the shipping costs. Now if I'm selling something hundred dollars, two hundred dollars and I'm gonna make fifty sixty seventy dollar profit off the sale of that item I offer my customers free shipping because that encourage them and 
and it's usually a selling point where they're going to, you know, buy that item because it's also all for free shipping. All right, guys, know the item that you're listing. A lot of times people don't put very good descriptions on a item that can add to your sales. Make sure your title is de uh, decent. Make sure you know what your, the title of your item is. For instance, iPhone 6 Plus 32 gig. Make sure that's up in your title. People exactly know what that is. They understand it. They're not going to send you a lot of emails on, okay, is this a 12, a 16 gig, 32 gig, 64 gig, so forth. Know your product. Other items. If you have an item number, UPC number, SKU number, any of those type of things will add to people looking at your item and they know what they're buying. Uh, you'll get a lot of emails from folks if you leave out some description of your item. There's a lot of smart buyers out there. They know what they're looking for. Those type of things. Make sure you list them for them so they can buy. Don't ask that questions. They have to ask a lot of questions and you have to spend a couple days getting back to them. You may lose that sale right then and there because that customer might not come back. They might do some more searching and find the item they were looking for because it, it has a great title and great description of what it is. Another big mistake that newbies uh, make on selling on eBay is auction compared to buy now. That is a big problem with a lot of people, and it affects the price of an item being sold. So if you do a search on an eBay and you do a search on, I don't know, some collectible, let's say a humble figurine, you'll see on there that people that list stuff for auction, sometimes those uh, humble figurines sell for $0.99, cent, $2.99, cent because they were hoping on people bidding on it and jacking up the price so they can get a good sale. But again, folks, one rule of thumb I use is if it's not a hot item, if I don't think a lot of people are going to be out there looking for that item, I list it buy now. Buy now is I want to sell it for $20. That's what I list it for. And I wait until a customer come along and purchase that for $20. Be patient. Don't try necessarily, well, I want to sell this in three days. I want to sell it in five days. I want to sell it in seven days. And I, I want the money now, so I'm going to put it up for auction. You're going to lose your butt off of those auctions most of the time. Again, I use buy now 99% of the time. The only time I would put something up for auction, if it's an iPhone, iPad, a hot item that you know a lot of people are going to be looking for, it, and a lot of people are potentially going to bid on it. Be patient. List stuff for buy now. I, most of my listings are 30-day listings. I leave it out, items out there for 30 days. Hopefully, they sell in one day. Hope, they may sell in 29 days. Heck, they may sell in 60 days. I have sold items that's been out there for three months, and all of a sudden, the right person comes along looking for that item. They buy it, and, it's, and that's it. Now, me, I'm trying to sell in... A lot of items on eBay, so my inventory is high, my listings are high. I have over a thousand listings, so I can afford to put, you know, a thousand items out there for buy now because I know I'm going to get sales every day on something. All right, another tip for me make sure you only put stuff for auction that you know you're going to get close to the price that you're hoping to get for. If not, listed as buy now. Alright, let's uh, do a search on Matchbox. And I'm going to do this top one here because these are the old English ones that are made in England. And actually I'm going to do a Y11 is one of the model numbers. These are cards of yesteryear. Let's bring that up. So let's go to advanced search because I want to see what they sold for. And I'm going to give you an example on, here's an example right here. This is an old 1973 car and because somebody did an auction on that, they end up have to sell it for 99 cents. 
compared to somebody doing a buy now. So all the auctions you see here, these prices are probably much lower than what they should be. So let's do a, let's click the button over to the far left where it says auction, and it should give us 16 examples. So look at the prices, 99 cent for this one, $7.24, 10, $5 had five bids on there, this one had one bid on it. Let's go back and click buy now and see if those prices jump up. And as you can see, similar cars from the same year, the prices are higher. Because they waited, they put a buy now price on there, they waited until somebody came along and wanted that car and was willing to pay that dollar amount. So that's what you have to look out for. So be very cautious on putting everything out there as an auction because like that example I showed you, you're going to end up selling something for 99 cents or $2 when you were hoping to get $20 for it. So if it's not a hot item like an iPhone or an iPad or something that you know you're going to get a lot of bids on it, make sure you do a buy now price and get the price that you want for it by dictating your own price. So that's just a tip that a lot of people make mistakes on. And again, if you go back, here's a car that probably should have sold for $10 or more, sold for $0.99 cent because one person bid it on it. Here's a car, probably could have sold for a little bit more. Five people bid it on it, they got it up to $7.24. Here's another one, five bids, $5.65. So be, be very, very cautious of that. A lot of people make big mistakes, lose money, and get discouraged because they think eBay sucks because of what just happened on that sample I showed you. All right, we'll move on. All right, let's talk about certain type of items, collectibles. I would say 95% of the collectibles, eBay is a bad place to sell them at because you are not going to get the price that you think you're going to get for them. Let's, for instance, Humbles. Now, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, Humbles, you had Humbles. You can count out that Humbles is worth $200, $300, $100. But because of eBay, eBay has ruined the collectible market in most cases. So you put that Humble out there now that you think that you used to know 20 years ago was worth $300, you'd be lucky if you get $10 for it now. Because again, you have a thousand people out there, a hundred people out there with the same item list which jacks down the price because everybody tries to undercut the next person and now that $300 humble is worth $10 and that's all you're going to get for it. For it. And then you're going to be very discouraged, you're going to stop selling on eBay because you're going to be pissed at eBay it's not eBay fault. Well, it is their fault in a way. It's their fault because they have an avenue to provide thousands of people, millions of people, with selling items out there. And therefore, a lot of collectibles prices are jacked down. I laugh when I hear people at work talking about, oh, well, I got a thousand Beanie Babies. Well, those thousand Beanie Babies, you'd be lucky if you get $10 for all thousand of them. That was a market that was hot when it was hot, and now you can't give them away. And the reason you can't give them away, because again, people are selling so many out on eBay, the demand is not there anymore. Because the accessibility to those items you can get at the drop of a dime, so it's no big deal, the, the prices get jacked down. So if you plan on selling grandma's collectibles, and you think, oh, these are a lot of money. Grandma paid a lot for them. You're going to be very discouraged. And you're not going to get the money you think you're going to get for it. Now, there are some collectibles. There are items. Old toys are a big seller. And the reason why they're a big seller is 30 years ago, you know, your mom or your dad or your grandmother paid $5 for this toy. And now it's worth $40. Then that's, that's a great deal. You know, for instance, Lion Air Trains. Lion Air Trains, back then, probably cost $15, $20 to buy a Lion Air Train, an old one. 
Those are the things that's worth $300, $400 now. Not the collectibles that you paid $300 20 years ago. They're not worth as much now. But it's those toys that are great sellers now because they're old. A lot of people didn't keep them. The availability is not there like it is of stuff that, you know, people have been collecting for years. But toys, because people play with them, kids play with them, they tear up. There's not, there's not a million Lionel train sets out there for old model. It may only be, you know, 200 out there for old model. Therefore, when one come available, the price goes up pretty good. And you're going to make more money than what it was paid for originally. So keep that in mind. All right, do not reinvent the wheel. If the wheels already exist, don't try to remake it. In other words, there's listings out there just like the item that you have prepared to list. Find that listing, copy it, and use that same listing. Put your picture in it and go from there. It saves you a lot of time. Everybody does it. It's a normal practice on eBay. Again, do not reinvent the wheel. Steal somebody else's title. Steal somebody else's description if it matches your item and use it. Who cares? No one cares. If, it, if anyone cared, you wouldn't be able to copy it off of eBay. eBay would block it for doing it. So do it. I do it all the time. What I mean by steal, steal, steal is in this example I typed in Motor Trend diecast cars and let's say the second one is the exact same car I'm gonna be listing why reinvent the wheel what I do is click on the, the item that's similar to mine I go down and click sell now so what it'll do is it'll pick up the same categories that this item was listed in I don't have to research that it will pick up the same title and you can modify that if you want so let's go ahead and click on sell now and what it does is brings up a blank worksheet so to speak so I already have my title up here I can uh, change my store category to whatever store categories I created if I have a UPC code I can put that in there my item is new, exactly the same way the item that I stole from. And then I could add my pictures here of the same item and put in all of my other information. So it's, it saves you a little time on listing from scratch. At least you're pulling up other people's uh, information as far as title. You're pulling up the correct category that item should go in. So it saves you some steps. So always do that first. Research, look. All right, hopefully that's an important tip for you. It'll save you some time in the future. It'll save you some time on your listings. Another helpful tip is the research. What a lot of people do, they go on eBay, they see what everybody else is listing stuff for, and they try to match the prices. I go a step, step further. I do advanced search on stuff that's sold and I actually get the price that people sold items for just like mine. And that's why I usually gauge at when I'm going to list something by now, I go out there and if I see the average sold price is $25, then I list my item for $25 because I'm hoping to get the same amount. Do that. Don't look at everybody listing stuff because people list stuff for $200 when the item is worth $40. You don't want to do that. Item would never sell. People are never going to look at you. They're going to bypass your listing. Get a good research price on items that sold. And I'll show you how to do that. And I'll put a little clip in here and show you how to go ahead and do advanced search of items, what they sold for. That's what I always look for. And when I'm out there on, and looking for items to purchase, I do searches on that. All right, with this tip, I'm going to show you how to research the price of items, what they're selling for, not necessarily what people are listing things for. So let's go back and use the same example. Uh, let's do a search on Motor Trend 
diecast cars there it is right there we're gonna go ahead and search and now on the search screen we we have a listings and it kinda gives you an idea of everybody what prices they're listing uh, similar items for but what we want to do is we want to see what items actually sold for so we're going to click over to the right we're going to click advance and it's going to bring up this uh, search screen and all you we want to do is go down here and click sold listings and then hit search again so now you have idea you see these items that's in green you have an idea what these items sold for now and then you look for the similar item that you're going to list match up the prices to give you an idea of what these may sell for if you list them now you can come up with your own price you can do whatever you needed to do but I use this as research so when I do research on items that I'm when I'm at the auction house I pull up my phone I see what these items has been selling for and then I know if that's a good value if I'm gonna purchase that or not and if I can make money off of it so that's how you do your research you just simply go in advance you click sold items and it'll start listing everything that's sold it'll give you a date so right here on December the 4th this particular item sold for thirteen dollars and twenty six cents so hopefully that's a helpful tip let's move on alright Cincinnati Auction King what do I do after I sell the extra items in my house what other items can I sell on eBay well there's several avenues that you can start with thrift stores go look for stuff at thrift stores that you think you can get cheap enough and resell on eBay make sure you do some research and see if those type of items does sell well on eBay Goodwill stores same thing look around Goodwill stores what I did for a while is I went to Goodwill stores and found jerseys baseball jerseys football jerseys get them for a couple of dollars bring them back home list them on eBay and let them sit and see if they sell which is a great avenue to sell stuff on go to auctions auctions is a great place to get cheap stuff at uh, also a lot of auction sales in box lots uh, you know they might have 20 30 items in a box and there may be 15 items in that box that you can resell on eBay garage sales if you have the time to go to garage sales and some of you go to garage sales every week anyway so start looking for stuff that you can sell on eBay buy there you know at garage sales you get stuff cheap a quarter you know 50 cent a dollar you know it doesn't matter if you pay five dollars at a garage sale if you think you can make ten dollars or fifteen dollars off of it on eBay buy it those are the things you need to do and the things that you need to look for I've been to big lots before <laughs> this is a normal to store I go to big lots I look around I see items that I might be able to resell on eBay you know a lot of times they are you at big lots you're getting discontinued stuff find it find that discontinued stuff and resell on eBay I have a guy that I know at work uh, he does great on Amazon you know he goes and get hair color for women and if that item is going to be discontinued you know look at your wife if your wife colors her hair all the time and she uses a certain product well think what's going to happen if they discontinue that product she's going to go nuts and she's going to be looking for that product anywhere she can find it and she's willing to pay top dollar for it so look for things like that I mean it's it's, it's weird but it's very simple to do just go and do some research, read up, watch the news. You know, companies all the time are discontinuing certain products. Find those products, get them in bulk, resell them on eBay. Again, a hair product that costs your wife $10 to buy, she'll pay $40 for it if it's going to be discontinued. Uh, about last year sometime, I bought this hair product and it was being discontinued I found 18 of them around at my local Menards I mean at all places a hair product at Menards I found 18 of them I had to go to three or four Menards to find them 
I got them for three dollars and fifty cent each, and they sold for thirty dollars each. I mean, I don't find you don't find finds like that all the time, but they're out there. So you just have to do research. You just have to check fingernail polish if it's discontinued and you know they're changing it or or particular manufacturer goes out there's a lot of people that use that product and like that product and they want that product and they'll pay top dollar for it so remember those type of things you have a lot of avenues to go out and find stuff so hopefully that helps you out to find uh, things to resell I'll give you one more example. I want to tell you what product that I get from overseas and and bring here and re, and bring here and resell. So I buy a product on eBay. It's from China. I buy it in bulk. I bring it back here. I get it delivered here, of course, and I resell on eBay. Even though this Chinese manufacturer is selling on eBay, also, how can I buy from them and resell it and make money? Well, I'll tell you how. People do not want to wait two, three, four, five weeks to get an item from China when they need it. So they'll come to me, a U.S. dealer, and pay more money for it because they don't want to wait that long. So find products like that that you can buy from China in bulk, have it delivered back here to the States. You resell it on eBay. It doesn't matter. Sell it for a few dollars more and you will make money. So those are some examples that you can always find product. Hope that will help you out. All right, folks. My last example in this uh, video, and hopefully I'll provide you more tips uh, going forward about selling on eBay. But my last example is provide great customer service. I cannot tell you how important that is. Let me give you another example. There were some items I wanted to buy from this one seller on eBay. And when I read his description, it says he only ships on Friday. Okay, I found that totally ridiculous. And I thought this guy does not have a clue on how to sell stuff on eBay. First of all, so if what he's saying is if I bought something from him on a Saturday, he won't ship until the following Friday, six, seven days later. To me, that's ridiculous. If you're like I am, I'm like a little kid when I purchase stuff online. I'm looking the next day on tracking and see when it's going to be delivered. So make sure you ship stuff right away. I'm telling you, I will ship stuff same day or next day at the worst when one of my customers purchased something for me. They really appreciate if they get stuff in two, three, four days from you because you ship right away. Even if it takes seven days, meaning that the post office is slow, if they can see that you shipped it right away, they're not going to complain about getting it six, seven days later because they know it's out of your hands that you shipped it right away. But I tell you, the biggest frustrating thing for me, if I purchase something online and notice that it took them three, four, five days just to ship it to me, that really frustrates me, and I have a tendency not to purchase anything from that seller again. So provide great customer service. And part of that great customer service is shipping their merchandise as soon as they pay for it as quick as possible. Again, if I'm at home and somebody's purchased something before my mail mailman come, and I can get it in my mailbox for my mailman to pick up and to deliver, I do that. Or if I can get to the post office before it closes, I'm going to make that little trip to the post office so that customer item can be shipped that same day. Again, worst come to worst, I'm going to ship the following day, first thing in the morning. And again, that's why I carry a 100% feedback rating or 99.8% right now because I had one customer that was upset about something. But that's out of 3,500 listings. I had one negative feedback. So I'm doing a 99.8, and hopefully in a couple months, that one bad feedback would drop off from back up to 100%. So, all right, enough of that. Provide great customer service. And, guys, I appreciate you watching this video. And, again, I will put more videos out just like this to help you out on selling on eBay. So, Cincinnati Auction King, signing off. You guys have a great day.